Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're here for the first time, my name is Samuel and I'm a student studying at university. And recently I made a video on the iPad Pro and how I use it as a student in university. And so a couple of people have asked me questions since then. And one of the main ones are, what do you think is the best app for taking handwritten notes on the iPad Pro? And that's a good question because when I got the iPad Pro for the first time, I had no idea. But if you've done your research, you'll know that although there are a large amount of apps out there, such as Microsoft OneNote or even the Apple Notes app, this whole sphere of handwritten notes on the iPad Pro is dominated by two apps, Notability and GoodNotes. And today I'm gonna to go into which one I think is better and which one I use as my primary note-taking app. And so to explain my decision, I think there are a couple key questions that we should ask. And those key questions form the structure of this video as well. Firstly, I'm gonna go into what exactly should we be expecting from these apps? And then I'm gonna go into what are the defining and distinguishing features and tools that they offer you. Thirdly, I'm gonna go into what that writing experience is like when you pick up your pen and write on the iPad Pro. And finally, I'll end by giving you my opinion on which one I think is the better note-taking app, but more importantly, why I think that's the case, because that's where all the interesting stuff lies. And for all of you who just don't wanna wait till the end of the video for the answer, I'll give it to you right now. I use both. So in order to properly make a decision on these apps, it's important to understand what they're trying to achieve. And I was thinking about how I was gonna explain this to you. And then I thought, how about a flashback back to when I used real paper? So picture this, it's the beginning of the year in university or school, and you go out to buy the stuff that you need. And what do you buy? So when I was in school, I'd go out shopping and I'd buy a notebook for every single one of my subjects and then after that I'd probably buy some graph paper because maths and physics needed graph paper. And then all of a sudden I'd remember that throughout the semester I'd be receiving an endless amount of printouts, handouts, worksheets, scans, tests, homework, quizzes, even the textbook that was printed out. So I'd have a lot of paper and then I realised I probably need a place to store all these files because then I'd go out and buy all these folders in an ideal world because I, I didn't actually do this. Um. And so ideally, you go out and get a whole lot of folders, one folder for each subject that you have. And then to help organize things further, you get dividers for each folder. And then so you can organize different parts of each subject within the folders. And then the list doesn't just end there. Then you need to get all your actual stationery. Pencils, you need your pens, you need your highlighters. And if you're really one of those creative types, you'd like to get all the colors of the rainbow and all the thicknesses that you can find. Um, then you need like glues, scissors, staplers. And so I hope you get the point, because theoretically, in a perfect ideal world, you want to get the best combination of these things that work together in the best possible way for you. You as an individual, not anyone else, but you. And I think that's a fairly good criteria to have when you judge these apps. Do they give you what you need? Because everyone's a little different and everyone likes to do things in a different way. And so my criteria is pretty simple. I just need three things. Number one, systematic storage. So I need something that does the job of those folders and those dividers for me digitally. Number two, I need it to give me all the tools that I need to do whatever I want to do as a student. For me, that's quite a lot to ask for because as you can see, I love color. Finally, I need a writing experience that I actually find enjoyable. I want to actually be looking forward to the process of writing stuff down and taking notes. So, going into storage, the first app that I ever downloaded on the iPad Pro was Notability. And a lot of people said Notability was a pretty reliable app. And the moment I started to use the app, I felt as though the whole point of the app, apart from just the the note taking part was to help people organize their messed up lives. The way the whole app was laid out forced you to be neat and tidy. And, and I don't necessarily like that because I'm quite messy and all over the place. But I have to say that after a year of using it, it's actually something that I've needed. For the first time, I've gone through three semesters of university and school. I haven't lost a document, a handout, a set of lecture slides, a file that someone gave me. And that's incredible because all I used to do was lose things. 
and it literally does the job of a filing system made up of folders and divisions really well. It's very clean, modern, simple design that does its job when it comes to storage. GoodNotes organization system is completely different. Things are more, a little bit more all over the place. You have folders, you can have folders within folders, and eventually you get to your files. But as you can see, unless you yourself are an organized person, it's gonna be a little hard trying to find the file that you want. I mean, it, it's still a clean, modern, simple design that, that looks appealing, but, but I'd say easily the winner in this category is Notability. However, I still like GoodNotes. I'm not sure what it is, but there's something about GoodNotes that, that appeals to me. It's probably besides the point. So, moving on. Criteria number two was the tools and the features that both these apps offer. There are so many features within GoodNotes and Notability that you won't use around 40% of them. For this video, I've broken it down to the tools and features that I find important when using these apps. Firstly, pens and colors. So, Notability offers you a whole lot of things you can change when using your pen in Notability. You can choose between a ballpoint pen that has a consistent thickness, or you can go with a pressure sensitive pen that goes thicker when you push harder. The whole variety of colors that they've recommended to you from the start, but if you want, you can customize the color palette that they provide to you and add your own colors in there. And when it comes to thicknesses, Notability kept it pretty simple and they only gave you 16 different options for how thick you could make your pen. And also the exact same principles apply when you're using the highlighters as well. I personally think that Notability has set up this whole system to be as simple and narrowed down as possible so the user doesn't get overwhelmed with too many options to choose from. GoodNotes is the exact opposite. As you can see from their pen selector, they have an overwhelming amount of colors. When it comes to thicknesses, there's the ability, unlike Notability, to choose whatever thickness you want. The additional feature to this is GoodNotes allows you to set three presets for colors and three presets for thicknesses in your top bar. So it makes life a whole lot easier. A lot of people would say Notability is the more sensible option because it gives you a limited range of colors and tools while GoodNotes is incredibly overwhelming but I actually think both of them have their place and I'll come back to that later. Secondly there's a huge difference between highlighters and this really annoys me. When you highlight in Notability your highlighter goes above your text and if you keep highlighting it gets to the point where the only thing you see is your highlighter. I mean this won't bother a whole lot of people but but I noticed it and the other reason I've noticed this is because GoodNotes actually does highlighting correctly and when you highlight something good GoodNotes the highlighter goes behind the text and I think that's a lot nicer. Three, when it comes to the erasers I think uh, GoodNotes is very cool because they allow you to specifically choose to erase highlighter only which is something very cool and something you might want to keep in mind. Fourthly, drawing geometric shapes. Both apps give you the option to draw shapes. In GoodNotes, it's very simple. You just select the shapes tool, you draw a quick rough sketch of your shape. GoodNotes identifies what shape that's meant to be, and creates a perfect geometric version of it. In Notability though, you need to draw a pretty accurate version of your shape. And after drawing your shape, you can't take your stylus off the page for about two seconds for the shape to be corrected. In all honesty, it's not that much of a difference, but if you are doing a lot of maths and drawing a lot of geometrical shapes or straight lines or graphs. The speed of good notes is a huge advantage. The fifth point is moving between pages. A notability, it's basically like scrolling through a PDF file on your computer. Pages go from up to down and the bottom of your previous page connects with the top of your next page. Good notes, on the other hand, is more like paper in real life and you swipe from left to right to bring in a new page. And from experience, I'd say notability is a lot faster for moving between pages. Though good notes does have some features that do help it. For example, its page view function in the top left hand corner allows you to see a preview of each of the pages inside your document, which is a really easy way of navigating between pages. Notability's got a thumbnail view as well in the top right hand corner. It's just like a PDF thumbnail preview on the right hand side of the page. From experience, I have to say that Notability was far better with managing enormous files with 50 plus pages like a textbook or lecture slides. And that leads me to point number six. How do you move through different files within these apps? In GoodNotes, you can open multiple files at the same time and have them as tabs in the top row. And this kind of takes up a little bit of space in the toolbar, which some people might find annoying, but has never really bothered me. But Notability goes about it a different way. You just swipe in from the left, and then you'll get a preview of past 10 recent files that you opened. And you just tap on it and it opens. And it doesn't take up that tiny little bit of space that some people might find useful. But to be honest, after using both these tools for such a long time, they're so good at what they do that you, you, you almost forget that one's better than the other in a certain area. I mean, there's so many things that both of them are just as good as each other at doing. 
You can move things around. You can resize things. You can rotate things. You can go to Google Images one day and then drag and drop an image into your file. Or you can even do things as crazy as searching up your handwritten notes using their search systems, which are pretty reliable when it comes to searching up text. But in all honesty, once you start using one of these apps, you, you don't really think about all these features, you just use it. And so I don't really see these features as game changing or anything. So for the features section, I think both these apps are pretty even and I can't really say that there's a winner. And so that brings us to my final criteria and that's the writing experience. How it feels when you take the upper pencil and you, and you write it on the screen. And by feel, I don't mean just the feel on the screen. I mean, what does it look like? What is the experience of writing on the page like? Is it something you look forward to? And so, as I said, the first tab I ever got was Notability and I never ever got used to writing on Notability. Like, it wasn't just the fact that my handwriting didn't look as good as I wanted it to look, but, but both the pen options that Notability offers, the ballpoint pen and the pressure sensitive pen, didn't really give me the inky feel that I was looking for. That was probably the one thing that always bothered me. And I still remember the day I got GoodNotes, and back then it was the previous version of GoodNotes, it was GoodNotes 4. Currently we have GoodNotes 5. And I still remember selecting a blank white page and then beginning to write, and I was blown away. I've said this before, it's nothing like paper. It's, it's a million times better than paper. And it made my handwriting look like 10 times better than what it looks like in real life. Here's an example of what my handwriting looks like in real life. It's, it's sort of inconsistent, it's sort of messy, it's sort of all over the place. And when you write in GoodNotes, it's as though they designed the whole writing experience and all the mechanics involved with that. Everything about GoodNotes made me fall in love with writing. I didn't want to stop. Part of that is the writing mechanics, but, but the other part of it is you, your handwriting actually looks a lot better than... I mean, just look at this. It's, it's, it's unreal. For me, that's a deal breaker. That's huge. That's the biggest difference for me between GoodNotes and Notability. Because a lot of the time, the hardest part about, you know, studying or learning is actually the first step of starting. Being in your lecture and actually taking the effort to write something down. And for me, in this category, Good Notes was a clear winner. It was probably like the one handwriting experience in my entire life that I enjoyed doing. So, so taking a step back and looking at both these apps in their entirety. Notability is amazing because it does the job of the of the folder with all its dividers and it organizes files for you. And GoodNotes is amazing because it has the most incredible writing experience you can find on the iPad. So coming to answer, which one is my main note taking app? As I said at the start, I use both of them and I did this very deliberately. And so I, I basically split every single thing that I did in university into two categories. On this side I had anything that would belong inside a folder with dividers. And on this side I had anything that would belong inside a notebook. For example, if I had a PDF of a textbook, that would be filed away in a folder. However, let's just say I wanted to draw a diagram or make some notes on a topic that I had just learnt or maybe a spider diagram. I would classify that as something that goes inside a notebook. So I split everything I did into, two, into these two categories. So anything that needs to be filed away in a systematic manner inside a folder-like thing, I would store in Notability. And anything that resembles some form of note-taking or note-making or drawing diagrams or drawing a picture would be made in GoodNotes. And I, and I actually found that there was an incredible amount of benefit in creating this division because the things that needed to be organized stayed organized in Notability and the things that needed to be messy stayed messy in GoodNotes. GoodNotes was a whole lot of fun to use and it gave me all these tools that enabled me to do all these crazy things that went on inside my head while Notability forced me to become more organized, um, more disciplined to be honest. But yeah, both these apps offer so much value to you as a user with the tools that they give and ultimately the experiences they provide. If you haven't noticed, the one thing that I haven't spoken about today is price. And both these apps are paid apps. And when you consider how much we actually spend on things like notebooks and pens, you realize that these apps are well and truly worth their price. These apps are such incredible investments because they help you organize your life as a student. But more importantly, they enable you to enjoy the process of learning, which is actually what you're meant to be doing when you're at school or university. I hope this video has helped you understand how I'm able to use both these apps every single day as a student. So yeah, I hope it was enjoyable and thank you for watching.